Now, The Young Newsmakers with Byron Pitts. You all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? A remarkable address at the United Nations Climate Action Summit today. When Swedish teenager Greta Thunberg addressed the United Nations Climate Action Summit. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. Her outrage at a lack of action from political leaders inspired millions of other young people to follow in her low-carbon footprints. Our house, our house, our house is on fire! The house is on fire! Look around the world as we're seeing entire communities going underwater. Most activist movements, they come from the youth. Just because we're kids doesn't mean that we don't have a voice. They're the ones that are going to be around the longest. They're the ones that are going to be affected by what's not happening. So it has to come from the children. It has to come from our youth. And young activists like Greta inspired a global day of protest in September. But it's looking like this will be the largest climate protest in our planet's history. I'm a huge fan of activism. I think it is one of the pillars of power that can topple all the other pillars of power. Immigrants are welcome here! Young activists took the immigration battle to the steps of the Supreme Court in November as the court heard the case to end the DACA program. The program protects undocumented immigrants who arrived in the U.S. as children and are known as dreamers. Lives are at stake. We are taking human lives and we are using them as if we were disposable. Up on Capitol Hill, 2019 saw more than 100 freshman congresspeople sworn into office in January. Among them was the youngest woman ever elected to Congress, New Yorker Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. At 29 years old, she became the young standard bearer for progressive Democrats unafraid to take on her critics. Our villain of the day, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Even within her own party. Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, going to take you along. She's an expert user of social media, giving citizens an inside look in Washington and how Congress works. And she has an unflinching style of questioning and hearings, including a grilling of her fellow millennial, Mark Zuckerberg, in October. I don't know that often. You don't know. This was the largest data scandal with respect to your company that had catastrophic impacts on the 2016 election. You don't, you don't know? Well, Congresswoman, I'm sure we, we discussed it uh, after, after we were, were aware of what happened. Putting aside whatever you might think of her political views, I think she is a devastating questioner. Ocasio-Cortez became a frequent target of Republican critics, including President Trump. Cortez! Somebody said that's not her name. I said, no, no. I don't have time to go with three different names. We'll call her Cortez. Along with three other freshman congresswomen of color, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, and Ayanna Presley, the so-called squad. Say hi, everyone. Hey. We out here. <laughs> the squad represents this new generation of leaders that actually inspires young people to pay attention to what's happening. The president ignited a firestorm with a tweet in July when he suggested the four originally came from countries whose governments are a complete and total catastrophe. He added, why don't they go back and help fix the totally broken and crime-infested places from which they came? All four women are American citizens. Three born in the U.S. Representative Omar came to the U.S. as a refugee when she was 12 years old. We don't leave the things that we love. And when we love this country, what that means is that we propose the solutions to fix it. They're revolutionaries. They were first-time candidates. All of them won four women of color, bringing it to the establishment. It represents the future. While the country seemed hopelessly divided politically in 2019, a teenager in Texas offered a moment of grace. Can I give her a hug, please? 18-year-old Brant Jean, the younger brother of Botham Jean, hugging his brother's killer in court. We're in such a polarizing time that people don't realize we have more in common than we do apart. You saw someone? Yes, I thought it was my apartment. <laughs> Former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger was sentenced to 10 years in prison for shooting both of them, John, in his own home, which she mistook for her own apartment. <laughs> and I ask God for forgiveness and I hate myself. If you truly are sorry, I know I can speak for myself. I. I forgive you. I want the best for you. 
because I know that's what that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. Emotions after the sentencing ran high, even within the victim's family. It should have been 25 to 99. But Brand explained to ABC News, it was his decision alone to forgive Guy. Every time I ask God for forgiveness, he forgives me. So who am I to not forgive someone who asked? I think that showed that if that person can forgive, any of us and all of us can forgive. Through grief and from a teenager, a reminder to the nation of how the power of forgiveness can unite us.